Welcome to the Sim Center's Uncertainty Quantification Training pertaining to Natural Hazards Engineering. Today's session introduces the QuoFem application and some, some of its basic capabilities with examples. It will also cover the benefits of Gaussian process-based surrogate modeling. Our presenter today is Dr. Song Ri Yi. She is a postdoctoral scholar at UC Berkeley, where she develops novel methods for sensitivity analysis, surrogate modeling, and adaptive design of experiments at the Neary Sim Center. She, re she received her PhD in civil and environmental engineering from Seoul National University. Her research interests include probability-based sensitivity analysis, surrogate modeling, structural reliability analysis, and random vibration analysis. Thank you for being here, Songri, and I invite you to begin. Thank you, Matt. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming to Co-Fenter Training Workshop Day 1. So today, I will introduce you to Sim Center and Co-Fem, and the later half of today's presentation will be about how to do surrogate modeling using Co-Fem. And tomorrow, as Matt said, Akash and Adam will um, show you how to use your cu custom FEM engine, especially when your model is not written in OpenSeas. And they will focus on parameter calibration capacity capability of QuoFem. So before we start, all this, um, this presentation and the example files will be available on DesignSafe. If you go to the web page where you download QuoFem, there is a folder called training material and you will be able to find this slide. And in this slide, we put some useful links like the previous two training videos or online documentation. So this shows you the position of Sim Center. We are part of Nihiri um, Network, which stands for Natural, Natural Hazard um, Engineering Research Infrastructure. So as you can see in this figure, um, most of the participant participating um, facilities are experimental facilities. So um, ourselves, we develop software, but so we call ourselves as virtual experimental facility in the context of research infrastructure. So in Sim Center, we um, basically develop research software tools for researchers in natural hazard engineering. So we have six different kinds of software desktop applications, and they all more or less look similar like this. Um, so, but the, um, these applications build upon each other. So, um, first application is QuoFem, which is the basic level application. I'll talk about this throughout one for one hour today, and then. Um, the next level is EUQ, VUQ, and HydroUQ. So QuoFem only supports the UQ algorithms and um, only support only implemented UQ engines, and it helps you to connect with um, simulation model you have. On the other hand, EUQ, VUQ, and Hydro are more specific to specific kinds of natural hazards, and then. Here, this application aims to obtain structural response. And then there's another level called PBE application. Here, we extend our interest to damage and loss of structure. And then there is R2D application that gives reasoner of simulation results, including recovery simulation. So as you can see, as the level goes higher, it requires more uh, computational resources and it becomes hard to run on local computers. And for all of our application, we can run it, run the analysis through design safe um, HPC resources by clicking the button as we I'll show you in the demo. And main users of our tools are researchers and also practitioners in industry and government agencies. 
So how does our tools build upon each other? It's because we share the, all the application tools, share the same um, workflow called SimCenter scientific workflow. So our backends are often represented as a jigsaw puzzle pieces. So for example, in R2D requires all the component in this figure. And for EUQ, the related part will be from hazard description to uh, response estimation. So they share certain part. Um, and this scientific workflow is fully open source. And since it is modularized, um, it's flexible, extensible, and scalable. And also one thing um, to be noticed is that the uncertainty quantification is a big part of our workflow. One thing to clarify is that we don't aim to develop new methods to fill in the, um, this puzzle piece. But if there is a missing piece, we try to fill in. But our main um, objective is to find the application or software available in our research community and bring them and provide a um, smooth connection with each other. So this pre-processor and post-processor are the part where SimCenter comes into. And these applications are brought from the research community. So this is SimCenter. Our um, SimCenter's PI is Professor Sanjay Govindji at UC Berkeley. And our software team is led by Dr. Frank McKenna and our management team. And there is domain expert which directs us to um, which direction we should take on for developing our software tools. We discuss them frequently uh, with them frequently. And um, not only them, but also user uh, takes on greatly important role in development of SimCenter tools. So we develop these tools only to help researchers to um, collaborate each other so that they can use other state of art methods, connect to be connected with their research um, development. So um, we imagine our platform to be, a, a, our SimCenter software tools to be a platform to foster collaboration of, between the researchers. And for that, um, we really require feedbacks from the users and the research community. So when you have more ideas on uh, what, should, what we should have, like, of new feature we should have, or if you like to contribute to our tools, don't hesitate to contact, contact us. So I will move on to uh, CoFM now. So CoFM is one of the desktop applications developed in SimCenter. It stands for quantified uncertainty with optimization for finite element method. So um, this is the most basic level application. So if we represent CoFM using these puzzle pieces, it's only a two big chunk, which is uncertainty quantification and user provided simulation model. And if we further um, simplify this figure, so one part of CoFM is our front, front end, which is user interface. It interacts with a UQ algorithm. Um, one of them is Dakota developed by um, National, Sandia National Lab. And this UQ algorithm is connected with FEM software. So here we call FEM, but it can be any simulation model. It's just that our many of our users are um, applying it to FEM. So we conveniently call it FEM model. So one good thing of using CoFM is that we provide easy interface with um, the existing structure model. So if you have a working deterministic um, model, say written in OpenSys, then you can easily plug into the CoFM tool to run UQ analysis. So because it, this is so easy, it, it is even possible to run the analysis by clicking buttons without actually understanding what is happening inside. But that is not what we eventually we are eventually aiming for. So we are taking some effort to um, making nice 
technical documentation to give you a high level overview on what is happening inside CoFam and also give some references and have some video clips to um, convey more theoretical aspect on UQ. And for the UQ experts, CoFam can still be useful. For example, we are um, open source software, so you can always download source code from GitHub web page and modify the part and to make have more degree of freedom. And then there um, is a capa capability to have a custom UQ engine. So you can also plug in your UQ algorithm into CoFAM. And the benefit it can bring is that you can share this um, module with other CoFAM users. And it can also be extended to other tools that so that it, this your UQ algorithm can be combined with other um, hazard modeling capacity we provide in other tools. And then um, we can further pursue collaborating so that we can ship your algorithm into our um, release version of CoFAM. So I, I prepared this example to show you how CoFAM can be um, used as a research tool and give you some idea. So we had a summer REU student last year, which was from Ohio State University. Um, she, so he is undergrad, undergraduate student. Um, so Aditya was aiming to use uncertainty quantification analysis of soil liquefaction um, model using CoFM. So in part, in particular, he had a computational model that can simulate liquefaction. So it was modeled in OpenSeas. It was utilizing a material model called PM4 cent. And then he was able to get experimental data of the soil property, which was cyclic simple shear test data. So it was available on design state. So what he was aiming for was to calibrate this PM4 sand model using experimental data, and he chose CoFAM to do that. So the first step he took was to run sensitivity analysis, because PM4 sand has more than 20 parameters. Um, we, by running sensitivity analysis, we were able to confirm that these three parameters are actually um, having significant impact on the data, on the output of interest. So these three data can be probably calibrated using this um, data we have. And then the next step um, he did was to run Bayesian calibration using CoFAM. So the cyclic shear test data and um, OpenSys model are imported into CoFAM. And to calibrate parameters, calibrate parameters of this OpenSys model, what CoFAM did was to identify the um, parameters that gives similar prediction to what we have obtained from experimental data. So, um, and since it ran Bayesian calibration, along with the mean estimation, which is here represented as black dot, we were also able to get this distribution um, has like the variance of the prediction we have. And then using this distribution, update distribution of PM4 sand model, what he did next was to propagate uh, the uncertainty in using the soil column structure model. So here, instead of just material model, he, model, he had a model to have um, the soil column model. And for the material used in the model, he, he um, infers the data set obtained from the calibration. Um, so this data was direct output of CoFAM. And then by running forward uncertainty propagation analysis, again using CoFAM, what he eventually obtained is the updated vertical profile of soil response. So there is mean estimate, and also he was able to get the probabilistic characteristics of this um, vertical profile of soil displacement. 
So all of this method, all of this analysis were done by undergraduate student within just 10 weeks. Of course, he spent a lot of portion understanding the theories behind the structure models and also the algorithms of COFM. But I thought um, this example shows that um, COFM can have some potential to be used in research applications. So I will now move on to how um, the how to use Coffin part. So first, you can download Coffin in the Sim Center web page. Our download procedure, installation procedure, has been um, simplified for um, in past months because previously we required to um, install the dependencies independently, but now you can just download a uh, uh, download coffin and it has some essential applications already inside. Um, and you can check documentation for these specific introductions. So I will start with a quick demo. So I, I downloaded coffin and unzipped it in the folder under um, C drive, Sim Center folder. So I create Sim Center folder, and here I uh, put all the applications that were from Sim Center, and Coffin is one of them. So if you go into the folder, this will be what you see. And here you might be interested in checking out applications folder because here you can see that um, the Dakota, some of the essential engines in Coffin, like Dakota and OpenSys, and even Python is in this folder. Like, so it, it, they are shipped with our um, installation folder. So Python is but only available on Windows. On Mac, Coffin grabs Python what is already out there on Mac. And then if you click this Coffin exe, you can see this will be what you see. So this is essentially the user interface of the Coffin. Well, when you first install your Coffin, what you want to do initially is probably to run an example. So here there is example tab. You can load one of the examples and is this the number? You can test running. So if it runs well, then um, you can see that your installation is fine. And also you can test the run at design state capacity. For this, um, you need to first have, sign up for um, to have design safe account, and then you can log in to um, using the system. And now you have access to design safe. Now, if you want to run the same analysis um, on HTC instead of on your local computer, you can press run at design safe button. And here you can specify name of jobs, number of nodes and processors, and maximum runtime, and press submit. And then it will start running. So one thing I want to mention here is that we are getting this error, but this will be removed in the um, next release. This is not supposed to be supposed to show up. And once you submit the job at design stage, you can wait until the analysis is done. And once analysis is done, you can get it, get the data using this window. So it's on, still under the queue, so uh, we'll have to wait for a minute. And then one other thing that can interest you is the preference tab. Under the file, there is preference tab. There is um, external applications box. So here, by default, we point this Python OpenSys and Dakota um, location to what we have provided. So it's under Coffin Applications folder. But if you want to use your own Python OpenSys of Dakota, then you can also point this to, to that directory, and it still works. 
And these local directories are also important because all of the intermediate results of COFM are saved in this directory. So whenever you want to do debug, debugging or you want to get additional information, you need to go to this location. And these remote application settings are usually not used by the users. It's mostly for the development purpose. And let's see whether our analysis is done. So no, it, so there can be some traffic. It, many users are trying to, uh, many users of Design Safe are trying to um, submit jobs. So we, we need to wait further. Meanwhile, I think we can proceed to the user interface. So this is the Coffin user interface you just saw. There are four input um, panels selections. So you start from UQ and go until QOI. And once every field are filled, you run the click run button to get the result at the result panel. So this message area is a relatively new feature in Quafem. And this will also further be improved on next release to give you more information on when you run analysis. So it's um its acronym stands for this uncertainty quantification, finite element method, random variables, and quantities of interest. So we'll start by uncertainty quantification. So currently in COFM, we have four different engines, of three different engines supported, and there is custom UQ engine. So what is the difference between the engines? Um, Dakota was the first engine we have implemented in COFM. So Dakota, uh, we have different methods supported in Dakota, which is for propagation, Bayesian calibration, deterministic calibration, reliability analysis, and sensitivity analysis. So if you want to run those analysis, you can run it through Dakota. And then there are SimCenter UQ and UCSD UQ, which is relatively, which are relatively new engines. And here we support efficient sensitivity analysis methods, surrogate modeling algorithms, and also advanced Bayesian calibration algorithms. So these are more of the response to the community's needs um, that Dakota currently they were not over available in Dakota. And then there is FEM panel where you give your um, FEM models, model information. So for the custom and open pie, it will be more covered tomorrow. So for now, I will focus on um, open sys example. So consider, um, suppose that you have an open sys model that is working well for a deterministic analysis then you need to do two different modifications. So, so first, first is in your input script, which is this ticker file, um, you need to specify which variable, which parameter would you like to consider um, it random. For example, if we have these four parameters to be random, we specify it using pset command. Um, if you already use OpenSys, you will be um, well aware that OpenSys um, define variable using set command, like if set p, if um, you write set p25, that means p equals 25. But in order to um, tell COFM that this is random variable, you now use p set p25. And then one more modification is to the output of OpenSys should be write it in a file called result.out so that Coffin can grab whatever values inside this um, text file. So for example, if you have two quantities of interest that can be maybe displacement at node one and displacement at node two, you can just give the write the list of values in result.out. And then 
once FVM model is um, imported, then you need to specify what are random variable properties. So previously we set these four variables to be random. And now you can assign random characteristics like which distribution they should be and which parameter they should have. Also, we support to specify correlation between variables. One thing to consider is that um, the correlation matrix always should be positive, def definite. Otherwise, um, CoFM will give you an error message. And finally, you specify the names of quantities of interest. One thing um, in typical um, application, um, the names of quantities of interest doesn't really matter. The important thing is that the length of total length of quantities of interest should match the um, what is written in the result data out, which is the output of the FVM model. But there are exceptions. If you want to use more advanced features of CoFM, you can introduce um, something called post-process script in your FVM panel. So previously, um, your ticker script um, does, did not require post-process script because the ticker script already produces the result data. But there are other alternative ways of in, having um, OpenSys model in FVM panel, which is that in your input script, you can only run analysis and you don't have to write anything. And then in post process, you can write result that out depending on what QI values user give, names user give. So it's, it involves more of the coding to parse these um, variable names to have and give the quantity that corresponds to the variable name. Yes, and then, so this example of this post-process script can be found on um, one of the example, actually the one I just ran through design save, the, exam the first example will show you, uh, contain some example of this post-process script. And then um, what is inside CoFM is that we have five, um, so we have five different engines supported. Um, if your FEM model is not written in either in OpenSys or FIPV, you can use custom FEM engine. And for, for the model you provide, you can run any um, of these UQ analysis. And for each, each UQ analysis has one or two algorithms choices supported. So to demonstrate CoFAM's capa capability, I will start with one of these combinations, which is OpenSys model to run global sensitivity analysis using approximation algorithm. So for demo of today, we prepared a shear building model, which is written in OpenSys. This is nonlinear building. So there are some random variables related to nonlinearity, and these two are related to the weight of the structure. And here our structure is subjected to 10 different ground motions and the quantities of interest will be the mean response and also standard response, so the standard deviation of the response width. So it's a bit tricky because this mean is um, the quantity of interest itself. So if you we do UQ analysis using this mean, then that means we will get distribution of mean and we will get distribution of standard deviation. You can see it in detail in the um, demo. So let's first check whether our analysis is done. It's not yet done. And this is exceptionally long as far as I know. Maybe there's a large traffic today, unfortunately, but we can wait further. So in order to 
import this model. I share this model file uh, through the designs, through the, um, the design save. You can find it along with the slide materials. In my computer, I have it in here, share model folder. So we have a main info file. In the input file, we specified all these five, ran five random variables using pset command. So there are values here, but it will not be used during the analysis because we need to randomly sample this value. And for um, gravity acceleration, this should not be the random. So it's fixed parameter, so it is defined using set command. And then what we do in this analysis script is that it, it's written in very straightforward way. Everything is hard coded. So we run 10 ground motions separately. And then there is a post process script which um, calculates the mean and standard deviation by collecting all the results from all the analysis. So I will try running sensitivity analysis using this OpenC script. Um, we select sensitivity analysis. I will uh, only run eight analysis because I have only eight cores. And just to demonstrate that this core is working in the model, it's written in OpenC. I will um, import it from the training folder. The main script and then there's post process script. All the other script required for the analysis will be um, automatically copied to the working directory as long as they are in the same directory. Um, for this, this was there from the previous analysis, so we we'll just remove that. So we have five random variables already populated in the random variable tab. It's because we used pset command to define, let COFM know that these five are random variables. So it used its information to populate the names and also even the mean values. We can always change the distribution, but I just maintain this one. And for the quantities of interest, because of my post process script, I can do something like, um, This So I want to compare the re response in node two and node seven displacement one means it's X direction response. So we will run the analysis. So it's taking a bit of time because it's running 10 ground motion simulations um, in each script. So this is the response we get. Since we used only seven uh, random variables, the response is really not accurate, but um, this will be what you expect from the results. And you can also see the scatter plot of the each sample that was required in the sensitivity analysis. So I have some results. So all these results can be imported as a JSON file, and also it can be exported as a JSON file and also be imported. So I have results already saved for the sensitivity analysis, which this time I ran 200 simulations and, to, and I got the better result. So here it shows that W and K are more important variables compared to um, other variables when you are interested in this um, mean displacement response. So I will quickly move on to surrogate modeling. So why we do surrogate modeling? Um, it's because our simulation is expensive. When we have a complicated structural model, um, we want to reduce the time to simulate um, this model. 
So for example, consider that you have two parameters that affect the response of, uh, for example, peak displacement of this structure. Then you realize that actually this D, which is peak displacement, this D is a function of these two parameters. And that means we can rep do representation that looks something like this. So or for each simulation of this structural model, you get one data set um, in this 3D space, one data point in this 3D space. So, um, and then the motivation is that, why don't we just save this curve, which is called response surface? Why don't we just save this response surface so that instead of when we get new, our, we want to get response at a new location, can we just interpolate this curve um, to get the approximation of this original structural response? So that's how this um, response, surrogate, uh, response surface based surrogate modeling method is working. And the difference between conventional regression method will be that this um, response surface is, um, can be very flexible. So even without previous knowledge on the functional form of this surface, you can in general approximate, um, you can almost treat this um, simulation model as a black box model and purely make regression model based on um, your, the data you obtain by simulation. So um, there are two different surrogate modeling met, um, types that is um, that can be application driven surrogate modeling or global surrogate modeling. The big difference is that when you have specific objective of constructing surrogate, there are some reason of higher interest. For example, if you are doing surrogate for optimization, then you will have better accuracy around the optima um, optimum point and identifying this region is another test in these types of surrogate modeling and also if you are doing reliability analysis the region around failure domain will be more um, interesting compared to other safe domain um, as opposed to application driven approach the global surrogate modeling aims to have good accuracy along the domain of interest. So we don't know where we are going to use this surrogate model. So we just want to have the um, good accuracy over or for the overall um, domain. Currently, COFEM um, have Gaussian process modeling capa capability and another surrogate approach called PLUM will be available in the next release as well. So today the focus is on Gaussian process modeling. So Gaussian process modeling assumes that response surface is represented as a Gaussian process model. That means if you pick any points in on the surface, they should be jointly Gaussian. Um, and seeing the relationship between um, each point, if they are close to each other, then they will, the QI values will be likely to be high, highly correlated. But if they are far away, this value and this value of QI will not likely to have high correlation. So they are not affecting much with each other. And based on this basic property, what Gaussian process does is to make a regression model or some kind of interpolation model of the data set. So here we use simply we simplify to one one random variables and one QI case. So each orange point requires model simulations, and blue ones are possible interpolations of them. So without any simulation, we have large possibility. We only assume that our response is Gaussian process. And these are many realizations of Gaussian process that can possibly be um, our response surface. 
but as you get more data points, you can um, tighten your estimation on the response level. So for example, if you have many data around this area, then it gives you better estimates. And if you don't have data, we still have large um, uncertainty in our prediction. But as uh, more and more data are acquired, then we get um, pretty, uh, we are able to get the pretty good estimate. And one advantage of using GP is that um, it also gives you information on, on how uncertain our predictions are. So it gets mean estimates as well as variance of the estimate. So what is happening inside COFEM is more or less similar to what is happening um, in typical GP construction. So you start GP training with some simulations and you train Gaussian process model by calibrating Gaussian process parameters. And if surrogate model converges, then you finish the analysis, but it doesn't convert. You do additional more simulations and check whether your surrogate model is converted or not. This process is called adaptive design of experiment. We will not go through detail today, but it can some basics can be found on our documentation. And these are um, some details. In, for initially populating the samples, we use Latin hypercube sampling, which is basically space filling. So we, we evenly populate our samples throughout the domain of interest to construct surrogate model. And for calibration, we use maximum likelihood. And to check convergence, we use cross-validation error measure. Also, this can be found in the uh, exact definition can be found on the documentation. So what happens in COFEM is usually when you have simulation model, COFEM helps you to run UQ analysis or optimization analysis. But if you introduce survey training, then you can do first COFEM analysis to get uh, your surrogate and it can be exported as a portable file. And then later when you want to run UQ and optimization, instead of importing original model, you can import surrogate model to get the um, result. So there was the um, quick overview. Now I want to show you how we run sensitivity analysis. So here, this is, no, uh, I mean surrogate analysis. So here, this is the file um, input we had for the sensitivity analysis. But now I want to modify it to train surrogate model. Here again, I don't want to spend, wait so long, I use eight runs. And we use the same FEM, same random variable. Now you see that this, um, this selection of distribution is disabled because for Gaussian process training, you need to only set the bound, lower bound and upper bound. So it can be considered as a uniform distribution. So, but I don't like this range. I will um, modify this range, but instead of doing it um, individually, I will just use what I have um, already saved. So if you don't want to type this every time, you can export this um, information and then import it whenever you like. And then for the um, surrogate construction, I will only use these two random variable only because this had more, um, this were more being affected by nonlinearity according to our sensitivity result. So there were some effect of non-linearity here. So I'll just remove this too um, and run the analysis. So um, it took longer time because I'm using Zoom as well. So here you can see we ran a uh, simulation. It took around 10 seconds. And it also gives you how well Gaussian process is constructed. Here uh, we provide three goodness of fit measure which are um, well-defined in our documentation. 
So it's normalized mean square error. The RMSE is normalized by the data variance itself. So here we set target accuracy to be 0.02 and our results are higher than that, especially for the um, standard deviation result, it's much higher. So that's why it's colored as red. Um, and it's because we ran only eight simulations. And also you can see the scatter plots. Um, So it's because of the ratio, if we put in this way, it looks like everything is working pretty okay. But if you draw in this way, it seems like error is large. So, but it's um, it's relative thing. And then I wanted to show you the results of the um, more, more higher number of simulation. For that, you can increase the number of simulation in the, using this. And you can also run at design stage, but I already produced the results. Um, here, this morning, I already ran this surrogate analysis result. Um, so this is the result I obtained from 100 simulations. So the, and RMLC value has increased, but it's still greater than 0 0.02. So it still appears to be red. And you can also see the comparison between exact response and the cross-validation response. So it's exact versus prediction. And you can also see the scatter plots of the response and the difference between estimation and the um, original simulation and also all these estimation are cross-validation estimations. So this will give you idea on how well this Gaussian process model is constructed. And then one thing you can do is that if you are not satisfied with um, your performance of the GP, then what you can do is save the data. For example, um, here I will go for the core data you can save random variable realizations and because these data set are valuable because it is obtained by running your expensive simulation model so we want to reuse this data set to further um, improve your surrogate model by doing more simulations so in this input random variables you import the uh, x data set um, which looks like which is just the data save all the samples save in your data and also the it's the same for the qi quantities so here i again want to run only eight simulations and see what it happens Um, yeah, so here we ran only one more simulations because our normalized error is um, became greater than 0 0.02, so it stopped analysis. Let me reduce the target accuracy to lower value so that we can have eight, um, all eight simulations. So, so the time taken to run the analysis will be the same it, um, whether you put one model runs or eight model runs because the, we can run eight parallel simulations using um, in our local computer.
Okay, so results are obtained. So we had eight more additional stimulations, but here you see that training samples, we say it's 107. So it means one simulation was redundant. It was used to reproduce one of the training samples to make sure that user didn't make any mistakes. So it's to catch the hu human error if it exists. And then um, here it is interesting that um, as more simulation samples are required, actually normalized mean scare error is increased. That can always happen because we are using cross-validation error measure. And it means in one of these six more simulations, we had um, more extreme cases, which we actually want to capture. Since we are using um, cross-validation error, error measure, it can be um, um, biased in certain degrees so that it for the user, it is important to aware that that kind of limitations. Um, and then once the training is over, you can save your Gaussian process model using this button. Um, here I want to show you how to use um, your surrogate in your forward analysis. And here I will create a code GP model. It is advised to um, create a new directory because it will copy everything in the same directory. Coffin will copy everything um, located in the same directory to the surrogate file to working directory. So you don't want to copy too many things that are not relevant to your model. So now we want to run Dakota analysis for propagation. Um, here now it's time to use surrogate GP engine as your finite element application. So it, it, it's located here because it's replacing the finite element model. So this is the directory I saved my GP model. So the first input file is JSON format. It's created from um, the previous run, and also we need to import pickle model. And then we are ready. Uh, here again, we set maximum allowable normal, normalized variance to be 0 0.01. And that means some samples are not, are likely to exceed this uh, normalized variance. It, we give you this warning message so that you have an idea on how accurate your surrogate model will be. But note that this um, estimation is based on the assumption that you use the same um, uniform distribution for UQ analysis as well. So if that is the, not the case, then this will, of course, mislead the, can mislead the um, insight. But we will just maintain this normal distribution for now. And here you can remove one of the variables, but you cannot add more because it is not, um, surrogate does not know any other information other than what we have trained. So I will do okay. So this is the result obtained. We can see that all the results are more or less similar to what we have um, what we can get from other analysis. The difference is that we additionally get the bounds of estimates because we are not, um, this is just approximation. So um, you can hide it or show it. So it gives you the mean estimation of Gaussian process as the functional value along with this variation. So I think that is the demo I prepared. Here I showed you some combinations of what we are supporting. And tomorrow it will be more interesting because we will show you how to use custom FEM engine and focusing on calibration method. Um, so I think that concludes my presentation today. Thank you everyone for staying so late. <laughs> yeah, sorry for running late. Thank you, Songri, for the presentation. Um,
if you have time. Uh, we have two questions. Um, uh, the first one, uh, maybe it, it'd be useful to have uh, the QOFM tool uh, up. The question has to do with the random variables. And so uh, someone's asking uh, how you might define the lower and upper bounds for random variables. Um, you mean practically in Coffin. So I think maybe this question was before the demonstration. So what we have here is that, for example, I will note one of the examples. So in this RV tab, we set distribution to be uniform and then put lower and upper bound based on your knowledge on the physical quantity of interest. So it will depend on where you think you will gonna use this surrogate model in the for like further UQ or um, optimization analysis. So there will be a range of interest and you can put those value in this panel. Fantastic. So it's in the random variable tab and it might depend on the, uh, uh, the distribution that you have for the particular random variable. Uh, another question has to do with surrogate modeling. How well does surrogate modeling scale with higher dimensions? For example, if you have 10 random variables, is it still efficient? So that is a tricky question because it, um, there's other, um, other factors that affect the performance of surrogate, uh, I mean, other than the dimension itself. So for example, um, even when we have 10 random variables, then 10 random variables might not equally affect the response. So maybe less than 10, maybe only three parameters are, can actually significantly affect the response. And in that case, it's much easier to construct surrogate because it will automatically focus on only three random variables and identify the um, surrogate domain. But if your model is in nature, um, in nature, if your model's random variable is equally important, then the surrogate will more struggle to identify the optimal response surface. And also, so how smooth the response surface will also matter. If it's very um, non-smooth and it, the transition is very rapid, then surrogate will struggle for um, during the optimization or interpolation. And of course, it requires much more data set. But if your response surface is very smooth, like almost linear, then even when it's much higher dimension, your surrogate model is likely to do a good job. And to give you a general idea, we have a documentation. You can go to find user manual in this help section. And here we have an example that has um, I think it has 11 random variables or so. And here you can see that for the displacement prediction, the curve is relatively smooth, so it does good job. But for the acceleration prediction, it's more variant, so it's struggling to identify when identifying our response. OK, thank you. Uh, then the next question is, um, is it possible to import um, models that have already been fitted for uh, Gaussian processed models that have already been fitted, um, maybe based on um, test data? So I'm not sure if that question is clear enough or not. Yeah, so I think this person fitted um have open this model and a MATLAB surrogate model or even Python surrogate model. So he want to run yes, so he want to run analysis using MATLAB or Python. 
So that is a um, good question that is also relevant to like the tomorrow's um, session. So here, um, what we can do in this case is in when you import FEM, you can select something called OpenSysPy, but this OpenSysPy does not have to be always OpenSys. So it can be a general Python script, actually. So one way to handle that is to use, if your surrogate model is written in Python, probably this OpenSysPy will allow you to import your um, Python script as your black box model. And there you can set the parameters related to that. So this OpenSysPy feature will be covered in detail tomorrow. And also if your model is written in MATLAB, you can use custom um, FEM engine. And here you are able to call MATLAB um, model. Again, this is considered as a black box model. So it doesn't matter whether it is finite element model or surrogate model. And tomorrow we will um, cover how we use MATLAB in custom FEM engine. So you might be interested in attending it. And it will allow you to run this, um, your surrogate model. Fantastic. Thank you, Samri. Well, that concludes uh, today's session for our UQ training in natural hazards engineering. Uh, join us tomorrow for uh, the custom finite element model uh, or method uh, and uh, yeah, day two of our, our tool training. Thank you, Songri, for today's presentation. Thank you, everyone.